Good morning trapezoids, or if you are rectangles, good afternoon rectangles. As you can notice, I am not here. No, I am not sick. Right now I'm doing a math training, which is called the SVMI, the Silicon Valley Math Initiative. Basically, it's to improve math instruction and student learning. So you will have your stand-in teacher to cover my class. Make sure you're on your best behavior. I know you will be. And while you are settling down, make sure you are sitting in your correct seat. The standing teacher will have the attendance and the seating chart with your pictures on it so they know who needs to be where. Again, this is all for safety for contact tracing in case anything happens. All right. Um, well, attendance is being done. Make sure you have all your stuff on your desk, your planner, your binder, pencils. Um, for the teacher who is covering the class, make sure that they're using pencils, not pens. And also, if they have calculators, have your calculators out. If you don't have a calculator, you're not going to be using your phone. It is not allowed in the class. Share with a neighbor when you need to use a calculator. That also goes with Apple Watches. Do not use them as your calculator, too. You should have a calculator, whether a graphing or one of the regular ones. All right. So you can pause here if attendance has to be uh, done. And also, no homework has to be, um, no homework needs to be placed on the desk because I will see you the next time I see you guys. So pause so everyone can get everything in order once done and move on. All right, so we're going to be doing our next lesson, Angle Measure. Um, for the teacher, please pause here and you can hand out the guided notes and the protractors to the students. All right, let us begin our lesson. The objective today is how do we measure and classify angles and identify congruent angles and angles formed by an angle bisector. This may be already on your notes. If not, then write out the objective. If it's already there, then we are good to move on to the next slide. So then the objective is how do we measure and classify angles and identify congruent angles and angles formed by an angle bisector. A few definitions that we need to know when it comes to dealing with angles. First one, ray. The definition is a part of a line. A ray has one endpoint and extends indefinitely in one direction. And the picture shows your endpoint and then you see a ray is going on forever and ever and ever. It's different from a segment. You've seen what a segment was. Basically, there's no arrowheads, just two endpoints, and different from a line. A line has two arrowheads going in both directions. Think of a sun. The sun rays. You have a focal point, which is the sun, and then the light shining off from that focal point. Just like you do with the ray, you have an endpoint, and then the ray just shoots off from that endpoint. Opposite rays, you basically put in two rays back to back and they share a common endpoint. So two rays with a common endpoint that forms a line. As you can see by the picture, you have the common endpoint, you have the blue ray, and then you have the orange ray. And notice that it creates a line because there's two endpoints, um, not two endpoints, two arrowheads at the end. So that gives you a line. An angle, you've seen an angle, different shapes, forms, sizes. So an angle is formed by two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint. And a picture, you have these two rays and they have a common point. This common endpoint is called the vertex of an angle. So the common endpoint of two sides of an angle. And this is what I circle with the green angle. So where those two rays meet, the vertex is formed. A common point. And congruent angles. You already came across the word congruent. Now it's dealing with angles. So congruent angles are angles that have the same measure. And in the example, you have two angles that are both 30 degrees. Okay, please pause the video here so the students can finish up with the notes. And once done, move on to the next slide. Okay, we're going to see some examples. 
So for this one, it says for the angle to the right, draw the following. So there's three things that we're going to be doing. The first one, we need to put points X, Y, and Z on the angle. For two, we need to put points L and M on the interior of the angle, and then points F and G in the exterior, at, um, yeah, the exterior of the angle. So for the first one, X, Y, and Z, they are on the angle. So as you can see with my example, I have X on one of the rays, Y as the vertex, and Z on the other ray. It is sitting on the angle. For the next one, L and M, interior. That's mean the interior portion of the angle. So imagine this was Pac-Man's mouth. If he's eating all the little pellets, it would be inside his mouth. So L and M are inside the interior of the angle. So for F and G, it would be outside the back side of the angle. So F and G are at the exterior of the angle. Well, it says use the diagram to name the example of each of the following. So we have angle A, B, C. Name this angle. Well, I just already labeled, I named it one way, angle, um, not A, B, C. B, C, B, A, C is one way. If you go here and go to the other direction, so it would be C, A, B. Or you can also label it as angle A. Every angle has a vertex, and of course, if there's a label or a number, then you can name it by that letter or number. So there's three ways, angle A, angle B, A, C, or angle C, A, B, depending on which point you start at. The point of the vertex is point A. So that's what you label. The vertex is point A. You remember when we learned back to what is a point, line, and all that stuff, so that's how you would label it, point A, or you write the word out, point A. Name the two sides. Every angle has two sides. So the sides would be called ray AC and ray AB. Notice the symbol on top of AC and AB. Notice how it looks like. It, re it re um, represents the ray that you see on the angle. If you had two arrowheads going in opposite, um, opposite direction, then you're telling me that AC would be a line. And it's not true based on the picture. If you just had, if you had no arrowheads and it's just a little line on top of it, then you tell me it's a segment. But if I look at the picture, it doesn't correspond. So you need to be precise. It needs to match up. If you're talking about a ray, the symbol will have a, um, a diagram with a, an endpoint and then the ray shooting off to what direction. And when you're labeling rays, where you start, that's the first letter that will take place. And then where the, um, the ray is going, the direction, the second letter comes after. So notice that AC, we're starting at the vertex, and then AB. So be careful, because if you did it the other way around, we have BA, then you tell me we're starting at B, and then we're going towards A. But I'm looking at the picture, and I see that B is on the ray, and then you're stopping at A. But that doesn't match with if you did the ray the other way with a symbol. All right, let's move on. Example one, it says name all the angles that have W as a vertex, B, name the sides of angle one, and then C, write another name for angle W, Y, Z. So for A, we're looking for all the angles that share the common endpoint of W as the vertex. So let's look at W. So I noticed that I have three angles right off the bat, just looking at it, one, three, one, two, three. And if you didn't do it by numbers, you could do it by the angle, the three letters that give you that angle, one, two, or three. So we have angle X, W, Z. We have angle Z, W, Y. We have angle V, W, Y. Now, you can have a combination of those two angles. So let's say, look at angle one and three. If you put those two angles together, you'll have X, W, Y. If you put two and three together, um, you would have B, W, Z. Let's see if there's anything else. So there's one, two, three. There was five that I labeled. Let's see if I have all five. Yep. And notice that these two are interchangeable because this is the same as angle one. It's labeled two different ways. 
same thing with two and three, and then these, these other two do not have a specific number for them. All right, next one, name the sides of angle one. Okay, angle one is here, the same as x, w, z. And let's see the two sides. Remember, angle is made up of two rays. So we have ray w, x, and ray w, z. Notice how I started at the vertex, and then the direction I'm going would be the second letter. Write another name for angle W, Y, Z. W, Y, Z. Oh, it looks like it's the 4 that is designated for it. So angle 4. Now I'll just put 4 because then I'm going to think that, oh, you just give me a number. So what am I going to do with that number? What does it tell me? If you put that angle in front of the 4 or in front of the 3 letters, then you're telling me we're dealing with an angle. So be precise. Okay, move on to the next. We've already encountered these three types of angles before. We're just going to show what the measurement is and what it looks like. So we have a right angle, acute, and obtuse. A right angle is just 90 degrees. And usually you see this little marker on an angle or a right triangle that tells you this is a right angle or this is a right triangle. Once you see that, then you can factually say that, yes, this is 90 degrees. An acute angle is basically an angle less than 90 degrees. So anything between 0 to 89 degrees is an acute angle. Once it hits 90, it's right. And then once it hits past, once it past 90, it becomes obtuse. An obtuse angle is any angle that is between um, 90 and 180, and not including those two. Because when you have 180, 180 makes a line. 90 makes a right angle. So anything between, uh, between 90 and 80, 180, so that's 91 degrees to 179, is obtuse. Okay, you can pause here until, and then move on, until every, um, move on once everyone has all the information. Right. When it comes to measuring angles, there's a tool that you need to use. And that tool is called a protractor. You've already encountered a protractor. We use it as a straight edge. Now it can also serve to measure angles. So the steps. You line up one ray with the bottom or the, the bottom or line on the protractor. Step two, the vertex must be on, on the center of the protractor. And step three, the lined up ray points to zero and then determine which row determines which row of the numbers to use. So write these three steps. And for the next slide, I'm going to show you a little video to show you how to use a protractor. Some of you may know how to use it. Others are not too sure or forgot. Maybe others never touched one at all. So the next slide will be the video. But first, the steps, I'm going to repeat again. Line up one ray with the bottom or line on the protractor. Two, the vertex must be on the center of the protractor. And three, the lined up ray points to zero and determines which row of numbers to use. Okay, you can pause. Once everyone's done, we can move on to the next slide. Okay, here's a video on using the protractor to measure angles. You can use a protractor to measure angles. This full circle protractor is 360 degrees. A standard protractor is half a circle. There are two sets of numbers. The red counts one direction and the blue counts the other. So it is 180 degrees. There are 90 degrees in a square corner and 45 degrees in half a square corner. Let's take a look at this angle. We can use a protractor to measure this angle. First, put the vertex on the center. We're trying to find out how many degrees fall between the two arms of the angle, which we do by finding the difference. We can find the correct measurement of the angle as long as we use the numbers of the same color. One arm of the angle points at the zero on the right, which is blue, so we can look at the blue numbers starting at zero. The other arm of the angle points at the blue 40. 
Define how many degrees are between the arms. Let's find the difference. 40 minus 0 is equal to 40. This angle is 40 degrees. 40 degrees makes sense since this angle is acute, or less than 90 degrees. The other number this arm is pointing to is 140. 140 degrees would not make sense since this angle is acute. Let's look at another angle. One arm of the angle points at the zero on the left, so we can look at the red numbers starting at zero. The other arm of the angle points at 120. To find how many degrees are between the arms, let's find the difference. 120 minus zero is equal to 120. This angle is 120 degrees. 120 degrees makes sense since this angle is obtuse, or greater than 90 degrees. The other number this arm is pointing to is 60 degrees. 60 degrees would not make sense since this angle is obtuse. Sometimes neither arm points to zero. For example, look at this angle. Both numbers we look at need to be the same color. Let's look at the blue set. One arrow points to 50 degrees and the other points at 130. Because neither arm of the angle points to zero, we can do 130 minus 50, which is equal to 80. It is 80 degrees from one end of the angle to the other. We can use the red numbers to see if we get the same measurement. One arm points to 130 and the other points to 50. We can subtract to find the difference. 130 minus 50 is equal to 80. It is still 80 degrees from one end of the angle to the other. We can find the correct measurement of the angle as long as we use the numbers of the same color. In this lesson, you learn to measure angles using a protractor. Thanks for watching. Okay, so you just learned how to use a protractor. Let me go on to the next slide. And we're going to be doing examples. So for number two, it says find the measure of the angle below rounded to the nearest whole degree. So as you can see, we have this angle and you would have to place your protractor, the edge of it, on the bottom ray, making sure that the vertex is centered with the protractor. Then since you look at it, you ask yourself, is it acute or is it obtuse? You can clearly see that it's acute because a 90 degree angle, you would have that marker that tells you 90 degree and it's smaller than that. So whatever number you get should be less than 90. So again, I'll show you how I have the protractor sitting on the angle. The vertex is where the center of the protractor is. And then if I look at the numbers, the bottom one, it starts at zero. I'm looking at the inner inside one. So you got zero, 10, 20, 30. So this angle is 30 degrees. If you looked at the top number and you said 150, Ask yourself, self, is this angle 150? Does it look like it's 150? It's way too small to be 150, so the 30 makes sense, just like you saw in the video. All right, for number three, you're going to measure and classify each angle below as either right, obtuse, or acute. So we're looking at angle PMQ. Even without using the protractor, if you look at PMQ, do you think it's obtuse, do you think it's right, or do you think it's acute? Uh, yeah, acute. Well, this is the right angle. If you have two right angles, that's 90 and 90, gives you 180. So this portion, PMR, is 90. This is less than 90, so then it would be acute. And of course, if you measured it, then it would be 34. For the next one, PMR, so PMR. You don't even need to measure because you know that this little marker here is 90. This has to be 90 to make you to give you 180 to give you the line PT. So it's a right angle, 90 degrees. For QMS, so we've got QMS, okay. Take your protractor and see what you think it's going to be. So make sure that the edge, straight edge of the protractor is sitting on either MS or MQ, depending on which direction you, you uh, orient your paper, orientate your paper, and then find out what the measurement is. You can pause here, and then we, we will reveal the answer. Okay, 
So if you measure correctly, you should get something close to 100 degrees. Some numbers might vary by a tolerance of 1 or 2, depending on how you uh, lined up your protractor. And you can see that 100 is more than 90, so it's obtuse. Let's go on to the next. Next definition, angle bisector. You know what an angle is. You know what bisector means. When you bisect something, you have the word bi. Bi means two, like bicycle. Or in sector, a section that you're cutting in half. Bisector. So the definition of angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. So you have this bisector cutting this angle into two equal angles, two congruent angles. So with an example, it says MO bisects M and MP. So you see MO is bisecting M and P. They want you to solve for X. So one section is 7X minus 33, the other one is 4X plus 12. If MO is the bisector, it is cutting the angle MNP into two congruent angles. So what can you say about MNO and OMP? If you said that they are congruent, then you are correct. If they are congruent, how would you set up the equation to solve for X? If you say set them equal to each other, and you would also be correct. So you would set them equal to each other because they're congruent, and then you would solve for x, and then your x should come out to 15. So again, you hear the word angle bisector, even just hear the word bisector, you know something's being cut in, into two congruent parts. So then that's when you set them equal to each other. So that's the clue word, bisector. All right, an example. This one says A B ray A B and uh, sorry ray B A and B C are opposite rays. So remember what we learned about opposite rays? They're back to back. They create a line. So F so ray B F right here bisects angle C B E and ray B D bisects angle A B E. You're going to use this figure to answer the question below. So the first thing I would do is mark up my drawing. Whatever information they give you, mark it up. Because that will help you when you go refer back to the diagram. You're like, oh, okay, this is how I need to set up my equation. Or this is what I need to do. This is what I have. You do this, this will help you to solve, set up, and solve the problem. So I already marked up that 3 and 4 are congruent because F um, BF is the um, angle bisector, and then I mark up uh, 1 and 2 as congruent because D ray BD is the angle bisector. So that means 1 congruent to 2, 3 congruent to 4. And notice that I did different marking, 1 congruent mark for 3 and 4, and 2 congruent marks for 1 and 2 to, di to distinguish. If I, I mean, if you have different colors, you can use the one line, but if you're using a pencil, then you need, you're not going to be able to distinguish all four of them, the two pairs, if they're all the same lines. So, it says, angle E, B, F, E, B, F, which is angle 3, is three, uh, 6, X plus 4. And angle C, F, a C, B, F, so C, B, F, angle 4, is 7, X minus 2. They want you to find the whole angle E, B, C. Okay, so there's two things you need to do. You need to solve for X. And once you solve for X, you have to find what the angle measurement of E, B, C is. So always read what they're asking you to do. Read it first thoroughly. Second, get all the information you need, mark up everything you need, and then find out what you need to solve, and then go on to calculate. Because I know that based on this type of question, I know some of you will just solve for X and completely forget to do the second part. Don't let that happen to you. All right, so we know that these two angles, 3 and 4, are congruent to each other. So that means we're going to set it equal to each other, as I've shown here. 
and I found x to be 6. Now, I need to plug in my 6 into one of these angles because I know what, what the if angle 3 is a certain measurement, it has to be the same as angle 4. So the, basically, I'm going to take that answer and double it to find my total angle for EBC. So I took EBF, I plugged in the 6, and got 40. So if 3 is 40, then that means FBC, uh, FBC angle 4, has to also be 40. So what I did was add them twice, or you could double it, and you get 80 degrees for that angle. So again, there's three steps involved in here. And like I said, most of you might just stop at step one and forget to plug in and solve for what they are looking for, the final result. So be careful. Again, there are clues here. If you hear the word bisect, then something's going to be congruent to each other. And if they give you the measurements, find out where it plays, where it fits in the diagram, how to set it up, solve, and boom. Okay, so pause if we need to pause, and then once we're done, we'll move on. So we have this um, same, ang uh, same diagram, but now they give angle 1 and angle 2. Angle 1 is 6y plus 2, and angle 2 is 8y minus 14. They want us to find A, B, E. So again, using the uh, information they gave us, it was the same like the other example. So we know 3 and 4 are congruent, and 1 and 2 are congruent. So since we're looking at 1 and 2, they're both congruent, we set them equal to each other. We solve, we find y to be 8. But we're not done yet. We have to find the measure of angle A, B, E. So if 1 is whatever, then 2 has to be the same, so that basically we're taking whatever we find for one angle and then doubling it. So I have 6, I took the angle 1, 6y plus 2, plugged in the 8, I found it to be 50, doubled it, 100. So that means A, B, E is 100 degrees. Again, it's all about reading what they give, give you, finding the clues, the information, mark up your drawing, figure out how you're going to set it up, and solve for what they're asking you to solve for. Okay, you can pause here, so that way you can write the information. Once done, you can move on to the next slide. But move on with the video. <laughs> okay, this one says Ray QS bisects angle PQT and ray PQ, uh, QP and QR are opposite rays. So basically the op opposite rays, that means it's a line. A line is equal to 180. Use the figure to answer the following question. So it says angle, um, angle PQT is 60 and angle PQS is 4x plus 14. So this whole angle is 60 and this one is 4x plus 14. They want you to find the value of x. You already know that qs is the angle bisector. So, let me see if I marked it up. Yep, I marked it up. I mentioned that this is a line, 180. They mentioned that this part is 30. You know this whole, um, this whole part is 60. So if qs is the bisector, half of 60 is 30. So if this part is 30, that means the other angle has to be 30. But they gave you, they, you know that this whole angle is going to be 30, and you know that that angle is equal to the expression of 4x plus 14. What can you do to solve for x? If you said set it equal to 30, 4x plus 14 to set it equal to 30, then you are correct. You have that piece of information for you to solve for x, which is 4. Again, okay. using the information they give you, marking up your drawing will help you. You don't do it, you're going to get lost and figure out where the numbers come from, how to play with the numbers. Mark it up. Do yourself a favor and mark up the drawings. I know I'm going to repeat this throughout the whole school year because in geometry, it's all about marking up your drawings, seeing how things play out in order for you to set it up. If you don't do that, then it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to figure out how to set up your equation to solve for the next step. 
So we were, like I said, for this drawing, we knew that this whole angle was 60. They told us that Q ray QS was an angle bisector. That means an angle bisector cuts an angle into two congruent angles. If you know that half of 60 is 30, then the other has to be 30. And if they give you an expression, that expression has to equal 30. Because whatever you get for solve, uh, find for x, it has to total up. You plug it in, total up to give you 30. So that way it represents that half of that angle. Okay. On to the next. Collaboration time. So for the teacher um, who's covering for me, make sure you pause here. And you can pass out the classwork to the class. You will be working together in groups or in pairs. And like I've mentioned, if you want to work by yourself, that is okay. But then once you're done or if you have any questions, you can go to a neighbor, go to a group and see what they've got. And maybe they can check to see if you're on the right track. Again, we're working together. All right, so you're going to get your classwork. Make sure you're working in pencil, not pen. Because if you make any mistakes, guess what? You can erase it, not scribble it, and have this whole abstract art on your page. Okay. So the video will be paused here. And you'll be given a certain amount of time to work on the problems. And then we will come back to look at the answers for the problems. Okay, it's check-in time. We're going to check the checkpoints that you've done. You had to do a protractor practice, so there was five of them to find the measurement of them. Again, answers might vary off, might vary by like a tolerance of one or two degrees, but if you're within that ballpark, it's not like way off, like you're off by 10, then you should be good. All right, first one, you should have 140 degrees. Second one, 95. Next one, 20 degrees. Number four, 80 degrees. Number five, 45 degrees. Okay, so like I said, you might be off by a degree or two, but again, it's how, how close you got to how you placed your protractor and how close you got to the measurement. If it's off by one or two, then you should be fine. Okay, checkpoint one, A, the angles A, B, G, angle G, B, E, angle E, B, D, angle D, B, A. So these three, either you label it angle four, five, five, six, or seven. If you had angle G, B, A, that's fine. If you had it reversed where you have E, B, G, that's fine. D, E, B, you get the, the gist. As long as that B is the vertex, you should be fine. Decide for, name a side for angle five, ray BG and ray BE. And another name for angle six, angle EBD, or you could have had it DBE. Either way is fine as long as that B is at the center because that's where six is, that's the vertex. Okay, find the measurement of the angle below and round it to the nearest whole degree. So if you got 118, then good. So you measured it correctly. You may have a tolerance, one degree or two, uh, two degree tolerance based on how you placed your protractor and what you read based on the lines, but 118 is the closest, is the exact number. For number three, A is 90 degrees and right. B is 129 and obtuse and C is 45 degrees and acute. Again, you have to use your protractors for this. If you're going to eyeball it, you're not going to get the answer by eyeballing it. You have to use your protractor. Number four, I marked it up. Hopefully you marked yours up, your diagram up, so that way you can clearly see what's going on. You should have gotten 10 as your X, and then you plug it in to find angle 2 as 50. Number 5. Again, had to mark it up. 
get so many information going on. And this is based off the other diagram. So you have all your information that you needed in order to see number five. Is angle D, B, F a right angle? Well, let's see. We did all that work here. And yes, because angle two is 50, you found angle three to be 40 based on the information they said. And yeah, based on the information that was said and that you found, and 90 degree represents a right angle. For this one, you already had this portion, the red part, from, the, from checkpoint four. So then, in order to find the other angle, you have to do 180 minus 100, because AC is a line, which is 180. So that gives you 80. They told you that BF is the angle bisector. So you have 80 for the whole angle, half of that is 40, so that's 40 and 40. So since you're looking for that angle B, D, um, DBF, which I highlighted in yellow, you have 50 here, this portion is 40, you just add those two and give you 90. So again, when you have something like this, mark up the diagrams, everything, um, everything you need, find the missing piece of information based on what you already know, and then look for what they ask you. Do what you, I mean, sorry, try to say that again. Solve what they're asking you to solve for. And then, of course, explain. Hopefully, you explain because it's not just an answer. You need to write out something to explain your reasoning. Okay, hopefully you did okay. But, of course, I'll find out from the next class how well you did with the problems. For number six, same thing. You mark up what they give you. And they said that P, um, oops, S, Q, S is the angle bisector. So that means those two angles are going to be congruent. You find X to be 5. Plug it in and double it to give you the whole angle of PQT, which is 56. All right. Most of you may have d um, done this, a critical thinking example. Most of you maybe not. Again, it's, they tell you about a five-star pointed star, and they said that the angles of each point are congruent to each other. So that means angle A has 7n minus 4, and B, angle B, has 3n plus 36. They want you to solve for n, and the measurement of each angle, so angle A through E. So if we know that the points of the star are congruent, so that means angle B is congruent to angle B, which is congruent to angle C and D and so forth. So what you would do is you set it equal to each other to find N. Okay, you found N to be 10. Now that's the first part. The second part, they ask you to find the measurement of each angle. So what would you do? Yeah, plug it in. Plug it in. So I plugged it into both, angle A and B, to see if I got the same number. So... I plugged into angle A, I got 66. I plugged it into angle, angle B, also 66. So that means all the points are 66 degrees. And this is a check to make sure that my N is correct, that I did the math correct, and that all those points should end up at the same degrees to show that my N was solved correctly. Right. So for the wrap-up, Take, um, you can pause this video, and please um, make sure if you're already in groups, your chairs, make sure you put your, your desk in the right way. And also all the protractors will be collected, either by the stand-in teacher or by a student who volunteers to um, collect them. Please do that, and um, we're going to go for the wrap-up. So make sure you put your classwork and your note, your classwork, and notes in your note section, in your binder or folder or wherever you're placing your information. And your homework will be 1.5 angle measure um, if rectangles. If you're seeing this, you're doing the even numbers. Trapezoid, if you're seeing this, you're doing the odd numbers. So. The standard teacher will be giving you your homework, so please make sure you have it. 
rectangles. Again, you're doing the even numbers. You should only see even numbers on your page. And trapezoid, you're doing the odd. You should only see odd numbers on your homework page. Next time I'll see you rectangles will be on Thursday. And trapezoids, I'll be seeing you on Friday. And also the homework that was supposed to be due today will be checked on Friday or Thursday. So make sure you have the angle measure and the other homework from 1.4 together. I'll be checking both of them. All right, so if you have any questions about the lesson we did today or any of the problems, please you can email me and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Or I guess wait for the next class and then I'll answer your questions then. Okay, so have a good day. If you are, I think trying to remember, yeah, have a good day, have a good class, and I'll see you next class. All right, bye everyone.